discerning our 5D experience, like as we move towards 5D, this new workshop that I'm not teaching it, St. Germain is going to teach it. Actually, St. Germain, Buddha, and Lady Nada are going to teach this workshop for the summer. It's the alchemy of play. And it is basically looking at all of those ways that you were rewarded for turning your volume down. Okay. And you were taught to give your power away because again, your power is, is in your expression. So what St. Germain told me is that our divine power is in the expression of our theme. So if your theme is freedom, expressing that is power. If your theme is joy, expressing that. But then what happens when you're in a swarm, right? of ego, hurt, damaged, wounded, traumatized adults, okay? And so like what you're going to notice is that this kind of, this this year is like the resurrection of the inner child. And it's all about Psalm 24. It's all about purifying yourself from the kind of the, the matrix by remembering truly how to be the child, and creating your 5D reality from the childlike perspective. So then St. Germain took me into over a hundred scriptures in the Bible on the inner child. And if you look at it, that's our treasure map. And the one that he's kind of leading with is only the child will get access to the kingdom of heaven. And you think to yourself, like, what does that mean? Well, it's the childlike spirit. Okay. I'm not saying like you're going to revert to childhood. I'm going to say that when you understand that even the the seeking and the studying and the spiritual journey is an ego stronghold, all right? And when you kind of let go of the trying and the shoulds and the seeking and the studying, really, St. Germain said you need two things. You need to remember your theme, okay? And you need to play games, that allow you to live in that theme 24 hours a day. Okay. And if you did the ascended master sessions, then you are, you know what your theme is and you know what your game is, but what they're also going to do in this eight week workshop that is they're going to take you through the different places in your reality where you have lost play like money. Okay. And health how it could play with your body, playing, playing to get your, your 5D, your Christ consciousness. So it's like Kundalini energy, but not through yoga or meditation. It's, he calls it the childlike meditation, which is only less than three minutes because children's attention spans. Right. And, and then the, the play of money and he call he, and he's using scripture for all of it. So it's called like feed the 5,000. So where you literally use the word Arabic Kadabra, uh, which is my words create my reality. So it's using the magic with the CK. And, and so what I thought we would talk about today is kind of like where you are not giving your permission, self permission to play and why okay so remember all you need to know is what you want and why you want it but where we're where the the constructs of 3d are going to keep you and what he said to me yesterday in meditation was that most of the people that we did our sessions with have been stuck in this particular incarnation of getting to almost a spiritual teacher platform and then incarnating because of right and wrong over and over again Getting stuck at the what is right and wrong, right? Because like I always say, I'm a good parent in 5D and I'm a shitty parent in 3D (laughs) because I don't, I don't do what other parents do in 3D. And if they look at me like, you don't do this and you don't do that. I'm like, I don't know what that is. (laughs) So, you know, it's just like, I don't. I've always been like this, like my whole life, because I've known what it felt like to be repressed and and there's just going to be parts of your belief system that are part of the hive mind. So here's an example of that. You've been taught, you talk to someone who's very awake, right? And you're like, oh, they're awake. They'll tell you something that just doesn't align with being awake, right? And so it kind of makes you feel a little like, 
uh, are you really, you know, cause it's like, it's confusing because they're, they're, they're speaking the language. They're talking the talk, they're meditating, you know, they believe in uh, the Christ consciousness and then they'll say something randomly that they are, that they are afraid of in 3d that will just literally contradict everything they just said. So when you see that happen, don't go into judgment. Just realize that there are certain parts of your, uh, your ego, right? Your separation consciousness, that's what ego is, that is still connected to the hive mind. So St. Germain said that collective consciousness is a hive mind, is a group think. So if you walked into a room and it was a collective environment, you would think the thoughts that they were thinking if you were not grounded and anchored. It means you would you would move into the hive mind. Now, so the collective lower mind is a hive mind. And so it's like, okay, everybody feels this way about mortgages and this way about politics and this way. And you might have your different viewpoints and perspectives, but like if I told you guys, like, let's play a game. Okay. If I told you guys, stop paying your mortgage, what would you do? You'd be like, what? There's where, you know, so I was like, okay, uh, don't pay your taxes. Right. And so it's like, just things like this. It's like, you can see where that moment of hive mind is. All right. Now, I'm not saying to stop paying your taxes or stop. I'm playing a game with you uh, to see where your trigger points are with your fear range, especially when it comes to fear of authority, fear of being incarcerated and fear of loss. Those are some of the greatest fears that keep us connected to the hive mind, fear of incarceration or fear of loss, okay? So those two fears, remember, fear is not normal. Those two fears right there could be the one thing keeping you away from the tree of life, which St. Germain says that the way he want, described God to me was that imagine God is a tree and we are all an individual branch, Okay. And so we get to be unique. We have our own leaves. We have our own flair. We have our own sauce. We have our own things that we do. We have our own life, but we are still connected to that tree. Okay. And just like with a regular tree, a branch can decide to fall off and die. And so what your ego's job is, is to lure you away from the tree, to separate you from the tree. And when a stick is laying on the ground, no longer connected to the source, it's just a piece of wood, okay? And it's going to be used by birds that make nests or whatever. It's going to be utilized and devoured by the world because it is no longer a life force energy. So this is kind of what happens with your own ego. Your ego lures you away from the tree and then it devours what, it, what you have until you have to kind of run back to the tree and plug in. So your ego is designed to to play the game of, let me see if I can get you away from this tree your whole life, okay? And, and we've been playing with the ego because there hasn't really been another playmate in our consciousness that's been consistently, but ego is a predator. So ego is waiting for you to, di to, to disconnect from the tree, and then that is when you are susceptible, just like a predator would uh, groom some someone or uh, a, a lion is going to wait for a sick animal or a baby before it goes and attacks a healthy big elephant okay because predators are going to look for the weak link and so wherever your weak link is where your weak link is is what you're afraid of so what you're afraid of is where you are not connected to the tree and so those places that you are not collected from the tree is where maybe your leaves are dying or you're afraid they're going to die. So let's look at afraid of running out. Okay. I'm afraid of running out of time, of money. Okay. Of what else would food, what else would, could we play this game of I'm afraid of? Because again, remember ego wants you in the shadow, not thinking about this, but fearing it subconsciously. So if we bring it to the surface and we go, oh, yeah, I really am afraid of running out of money. OK, I really am afraid of running out of time. Like there's a lot. To, I just well, I just had my second awakening and now I'm 50 years old, you know, so I could play the game of I'm running out of time. So if you if you really stop and, and take your ego 
whispers, you're running out of time, blah, blah, blah. You didn't pay your taxes yet. You know, if you bring this to the surface, then it's no longer shadow consciousness and we can run life force energy through it. We can channel love through it. So as Angel Rain said, the game is exposure and transparency. And it's not about being authentic. It's about being completely transparent. Yeah. Well, they did these private sessions with you guys these last this last month and a half. And they were like, we got to teach them how to play, right? Because when you understand that you are truly connected to that tree, your only job is to express your theme. That's it. And expressing your theme is your paycheck. Expressing your theme is how the world will pay you, how your bills will get paid. But if you are holding back on your theme, because usually what your theme is, is also your greatest fear. Okay, so let us say your theme is I am free, then your greatest fear is enslavement, incarceration, or losing the things that are free to you. That would be your greatest fear on the other side. So your Superman and your Lex Luthor energy. Okay, so that would be what that would be. And if you are in any sort of denial about that, then the ego will use that to poke you. Which means that you'll be like, oh, I turned my bills over to God this month. And then someone else getting arrested for not paying their bills will show up right on the TV in front of you. And you're like, oh, <laughs> you know, so like, what do I do? Do I follow the rules or do I be a child of God? And so like what St. Germain says is you don't have to decide that. That is a child would not have to decide that a child would feel their way into alignment and then the miracles would begin to happen and the feeling safe would be organically taught to the child. So there's over a hundred scriptures that talk about the inner child, which means basically if you do not think like a child and act like a child, you won't be able to get home. Where is your home? Have you guys ever felt homesick for a place that doesn't exist? Okay. Because your spirit is ready to go home. You've been at this since Atlantis down here in hell. And some of you have probably been off planet sometimes or in the inner earth or in the other realms to take a break. But ultimately, you've got to finish the game. And so the what the masters have been showing me is, so I think we did maybe like, maybe like 12 of you guys did this, these private sessions. And, and so I've done over, you know, like feels like 30, 40, 50 sessions at this point of the three. And every single time, like I was super excited to, to, to channel that second session, which is a resurrection of the inner child. And they, they teach you a game, which you already know how to play because you've played it before, but they teach you how to play with your higher self instead of ego all day long. Right. And it's a game of I spy and it's a game of hot and cold. And you're looking for specific things all day long because all day long, your ego is whispering for you to look for things that are the opposite of your theme in the subconscious, not in a conscious awareness, not like, hey, look over there. That's the opposite of love. But have you ever noticed that it is easier for your brain to believe something bad than it is something good about yourself? Right. So you get 100 compliments on your sweater. One person says you look like a fat cow. What do you ponder for the rest of the week? OK, so that is where the ego is working. It, so here's down the here in the third dimension. It's predator nature. It's predator nature. The ones that are not connected to source energy are in between animal and human. They're not quite human. OK, it is a predator mindset which is the collective predator so there's grooming there's manipulation there's luring and so in so you've got to put yourself in this idea of what it's like for your inner child it's only playmate really your whole life has been the ego because the ego is aware of you when you haven't been aware of it because another thing that the ego does is it projects you away from it out into the world. So when you get triggered, you believe it's someone else. It's ego channeling through someone else because there's only you here. You believe someone hurt you 
your ego set that up. So, and if you're looking at someone else, you're not looking at yourself. Okay. That's what the third session is, is the, the third session is the ego roadmap that teaches you how to see yourself with the ego so that you can see what vibration ego keeps putting you back in all day because the game of ascension is vibration. It is just vibration. Your ego is playing this game 24 seven. And if you go to sleep in a bad mood, your ego takes you into the astral realm. If you go to sleep in a good mood, counting your blessings, playing your game, you're going back to heaven. That is how this game is playing 24 hours a day. Because the ego is waiting. See, it's a predator. Predators are cowards. They will wait you out. They will go sit at a park for a year to find the right kid. You see? So the ego doesn't care about time. Your inner child does. Your inner child is the one with the time wound because that's how ego controls her and him. So we want this game. We want to kind of like what St. Germain said is we want to remove this spiritual work away and we want to learn how to play. And when you learn that you do not need to learn how to manifest, learning how to manifest is an ego game. Because all you do is manifest 24 hours a day and you manifest that what inner child is afraid of or inner child is excited about. Inner child is the gas in your car. Okay. And if you have no gas in your car, you want a cookie because you don't have your own energy. So if you have not found your version of play. Now, again, when I think of play, I think of something that you're doing because you love it, not because it's making you money or that you're really good at it or that you have to do it. And I've seen anyone, just had a session with someone else who they decided early on that they were going to live their, they were going to work their business and play, which means they were going to turn their business into their form of play. And guess what happened? Guess what ego does to your play at that point, right? Brings in politics and money and clients, how much fun is your passion at that point? So I got to see that in a session yesterday, how this person was all about play her whole life and then decided to make her play her job. And you could just see her inner child's like, what's the point? And it's not fair. That is what I hear from almost every single one of your inner child's when I get online with you. Because I can hear three voices. I can hear the higher self. I can hear the ego and I can hear the inner child. Usually the ego is very quiet in a session, but it whispers to the inner child. But see, if the inner child has been told that she cannot sing because no one likes her singing, she's going to lie to me too. Every one of you have lied to me unconsciously. I have lied to myself every day and it's no big deal, but this is the way it so works. What is this? Where are you guys? You know, you're studying all this metaphysics and your ego feels brilliant, but are you living? Because the 5D is only accessible through the playground, all right? Not studying the playground, not building the playground, not watching other people play on the playground, not being the wallflower at the playground, not hiding your tutu and eating a cookie. So, uh, but it's not my work. It's going to be channeled by Buddha because he's the big, goofy playmate. Like, he laughs all the time. Like, always laughing, always joking, always. And it's going to be channeled by St. Germain and possibly Lady Nada. We don't, we don't know yet. But those three elements are, so far, have given me the outline of what they're going to show you how to play with different areas of your reality to completely disassociate from the ego whatsoever. And then what it will have to do is it will have to integrate into just a focusing element, which is what it was created for. So it's like this big, ugly monster that's literally nothing more than just an inflamed inversion game. And once you beat the game, it moves back into basically the personal assistant uh, for the higher self. The higher self becomes the parent of the inner child happily ever after. 
That is what you can expect once you get your body back. So getting your body back is a game. Okay. There's no like, let me go on a diet and work out. No, it's the game of getting your body back. There is a way they want to teach you how to get your body back from the ego. Things that you can say. So another thing, another element of this eight week workshop is going to be that um, your you one thing you knew how to do before you did anything was pretend. And so one of the greatest elements of the inner child play is to pretend. So they're going to show you how to pretend you are Christ and start working with you and show you how to initiate your Christ powers through play games, through play. So you know how like sometimes when you're like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to command my authority here and, and you feel just immediately stupid, like, oh, like I'm such an idiot, right? That's your ego. Like your inner child's like, I'm going to command this. And then your ego's like, yeah, that, I, see, I see nothing happening, right? And so there's going to be some time lag. And the only time lag that ever exists is how much has your inner child had to lower their shine because of the ego, now, your inner child is never afraid of the ego if your higher self is there. If your higher self is not there, your child is obsessed with its own abuser. This is how your inner child gets with your own ego because this is your only playmate. And have you guys ever been in a relationship that was like they were difficult to please? So you found yourself constantly looking for ways to please them because you love them. See, all your inner child is, is love. And so your child wants to love the ego. Your child wants to make the ego happy. And if the, if the ego says, okay, go out and find something that makes you feel like you're not lovable and go, go out and create something and the child gets excited about it and then it hurts the child, the child's still happy that it did what the ego wanted. That's how that's how sensitive your inner child is, because your inner child is love. Now, it isn't hell, even though it comes is born into it. It can exist. It can play there. It can live there. It can find joy in hell. It can find love in hell because we're technically in hell. And there are things that you unconditionally love. The part of you that judges those things, that is not your inner child. Your inner child has absolutely no ability to judge at all. Not at all. Now you are uh you are sad. So the the two frequencies that inner child lives in is grief and joy. When you are feeling angry, okay? That is the inner child trying to get to a different place. It's like, it's an elevator emotion. It's, so it's like, I either need to get to grief to release this energy, or I'm trying to get back to joy. Someone is taking my joy. And I know that this is like, you, you get this. So they want to show you how to pretend. And th this is really awesome too, because I've been doing this. And like, so when I'm pretending my Christ, there's a pretend your Christ game that they, that they showed me how to play. And they'll show you too. And it's, um, when the ego's like, you're so not Christ, you know, like, because it will. You're like, I'm just pretending. Because that is kind of like, have you noticed children? They, they'll they just be like, I'm just pretending I am. And as soon as they say that I'm just pretending, it's like, okay. You guys, my work has completely changed. Because I had this moment where I'm like, I, 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 there's nothing to teach. It's just play. Everything is just play. You're going to play the rest of the way there. And you have been playing, but we've been playing with the wrong playmates for most of our life. Think about.